Hey, hello, and welcome to episode five of the Wolf's Coffee Hour. Uh, as I said, we're in week five, and today we've got uh, the soccer head soccer coach, Richard Gorski, and a, and a couple players along with him. Um, you guys won't be uh, viewing this live, so so we'll we'll skip the questions part. Um, but like I said, coach head coach Richard Gorski, uh, Mallory Schoenhard, Tori Thorpe, Elise Benner, and uh, as always, co-host Austin Heeb. Uh, I, I always say you're the top five golfer, but we'll leave that out. It seems to embarrass you, so we'll skip it. Um, and it's this also is kind not of the show where anymore. we, well, eh, I'll be the judge of that. Um, you know, and this is kind of the show where we answer the questions that no one's asking. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. Uh, uh, starting with Rich, just kind of a quick update on, you know, what are you up to in quarantine? What do you got going on? Uh, any shows you've been binging? Just give a, a little rundown of your life here. Um, yeah, I mean, it's work still continues for us till, um, I mean, it's just recruiting, basically, uh, reaching out to, uh, recruits, emailing them, doing zoom meetings, talking to them on the phone really, and, um, continuing to look, uh, for future roles really, um, working on the, still working on the 21 class. And before we know it, the 22 class will start, uh, working on that. And that comes uh, live, I think on June the 15th, we can start talking to 22. Your sophomores moving to junior year, so um, yeah, just been doing that really uh, more than anything else. Um, and then uh, on a personal, yeah, I've just been watching Netflix in the evenings. Really, um, I'm a really uh, I'm that person who really likes documentaries, um, so been watching a lot of that. Um, obviously, I watched uh, the Tiger program that's has been and gone. Um, Fair enough. But uh, the latest series I watched, which was really good. Uh, four-part series was unorthodox uh, and I was the, okay. uh, the Hasidic Jews in uh, Williamsburg which moved into Berlin and so I watched the, uh, that um, whole mini series that was really good and uh, yeah just been doing that and doing some garden work and yeah just relaxing yeah is that, yeah, is that, that on Netflix? Netflix is that on Netflix Rich yeah, yeah, it's on Netflix. All right, um, writing it down. Really I'm adding it to my list. I'm adding it to my list. Um, and I, and I see that you built a deck. Are you really that just bored, or is that you know something that you had been wanting to do for a while, or, or what's the what's the story backstory on the on the deck there? I mean, I, I think it's like a ninety. We had a 1970s deck, and basically every time you stood on it, it creaked and it was ready to fall over. Um, so it yeah. was a summer project. Uh, but obviously this uh, little COVID-19 thing that came along sort of uh, allowed yeah. me to start work on it. So I started redoing it and then I was like, ah, I might as well build another deck below it. And it just got bigger and bigger. And uh, yeah, it's a fun six week project. So um, yeah. Yeah. Well, first, first of all, don't slander the seventies because that's kind of the inspiration for my facial hair. So t pump the brakes on that. Uh <laughs> So with that, uh, we'll go on over to Mallory. Kind of the same thing here. Quick update on your life. Uh, what have you been up to? Um, well, I'm in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Um, I work at Stanford Hospital. And so I've been working a lot lately just with the whole COVID. And then um, just have had so much homework the past few days and weeks. So really been doing that. And then I guess the shows that I've been watching is that Sundays, Last Dance, so good. I've been watching that. And then um, also, I guess I watched that new show on Netflix called Outer Banks, which was pretty good. So, yeah, that's kind of what I've been doing, I guess. Yeah, I know. So a lot is LeBron of still, is LeBron the, still the best? No. Is LeBron still the best? No. no. Okay. No, no. We should start a tally. This is like an ongoing argument because every time we start the show, the MJ LeBron inevitably comes up. So maybe we'll start like a, a tally and we'll flash that up uh, each episode. But um, yeah, Mallory, thanks for kind of, you know, being out on the front lines there and uh, appreciate it. Uh, Tor Tori, you're up next. What do you, what do you got going on? Uh, well, I'm back in peer with my family. So I just try and keep like a routine and make myself wake up early. And I feel like I've just been swamped with homework since I've been home. So I do that my workouts and then I feel like my family has played um about every card game known to man that's about what we do I mean I don't really we watch the Jordan series on Sundays and then we play a lot of games I don't really binge watch any Netflix 
so do you have siblings then? Are they getting on your nerves or how, how's that? How's that sibling rivalry developed uh, in quarantine? Yeah, I have a sister who's home. She's a senior in high school. And so both of us doing homework at home, we like, how, she has to stay upstairs and I have to stay downstairs. Otherwise, nothing gets accomplished. And I feel like we need to take breaks from each other. Otherwise, it gets pretty interesting. <laughs> Yeah, it's a good, healthy, competitive relationship. That's yeah, that's that's good. Uh, are we talking least, poker here? Or, 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 or just like, I got, I got to figure out what card games we're playing so I know where we're at. What kind of card games we're playing? Uh, like <laughs> golf, Uno. Um, okay. Thirty-one. I mean, we we have a variety. <laughs> I like it. Okay. All right. Uh, last but not least, uh, Elise, you're up. Um, you know, I'm still in Aberdeen. I wake up at 7.55 and get to work by 8 right there. So, and then I work out. That's all I do. I literally went on a six-mile run yesterday because I just, it's just me, you know, so. <laughs> Find you know, that, that kind of leads kind of leads into a good question you know um how are you guys you know you guys are getting maybe getting workouts from coach fritz how are you guys handling those uh how are those going i mean it's for me it's fun now because the sun's out so i can like get a tan while working out <laughs> but no i mean we're lucky enough that with soccer like a majority of it is running so like we can do it outside you know like we don't necessarily yeah like yeah we're doing body weight workouts but like we don't necessarily need to be like 200 pounds and like, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with Elise on that. I love running outside, especially when it's nice out. And so that's what I've been doing too. And then I live with Emma, the so um, one of the softball players. And so she has like some weights and stuff that we sometimes do. So it's been pretty good. I'm like nice, Elise. nice. That's good. Except I do my workouts in the morning. I don't prefer to get a tan run while the sun's out. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, yeah, you got, he, Rich is really happy. All you guys are talking about how much you're running and working out, and I just see Rich <laughs> nodding his head. So, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> good good job on at least mentioning that. Um, <laughs> next up. Uh, Seems to be uh, one of our most popular segments, but you know we'll we'll see it. We'll see how it goes. Um, time time for some hot takes, and you know, Rich. I don't know if he has one or not, so we'll we'll maybe go to him last. Uh, but let's argue here, Mallory. What what do you got? You got the got a strong opinion? All right, Adam, are you ready? <laughs> I don't, honestly, I don't know. Okay, I mean, it has to do with if it has to do with horoscopes. Uh, we're we're in for some trouble. <laughs> no, it doesn't. So I okay. actually, I actually really like the ending of Game of Thrones. All right. Yep. The show's over. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that is a really hot take. That's a no, really hot take. No, I actually liked it. Like I thought it like, like I get like Bran. Like people are saying like Bran shouldn't have been king. But first off, he has the smallest ego out of everyone on that show. So that, I think that makes him perfect for a king. And he knows everyone's story. He can see into the future. Like, how, like, it, there's no question. Like, I think that's my uh, take on Bran. And Sansa becoming Queen of Winterfell, like, she deserves that spot, first off. John, yeah, he can go up with the wildlings. Like, that's fine. But I really like the ending. I just feel that there were so many ignored plot lines that that the producers took and they just totally ignored it from the book. So like, you know, Bran works back in time and sees his dad and then his dad hears him uh, while he's back in time. That never ends up mattering. All the patterns of the, the you know, the, the what are they called? The walking, not the walking dead, but. Uh, uh, the wildlings? No. No. The army of the dead, basically, yeah. you know, the army of the dead, there are, there are all these, you know, they, they're laying out bodies and spiral patterns that that's all that foreshadowing never came to fruition. I feel like, and then, you know, people forget, but Bran spent a good chunk of the show saying that he had no desire to be king. So, um, <laughs> no, but so did John Snow. 
Hey, guys, just want you to know, Ashley wants us to know they're White Walkers. Oh, White Walkers, there we go. Apologies, apologies. <laughs> um, and then the problem is, is the reasoning at the end of the show is they say, oh, well, well, he has the best story. No, he, no, he doesn't. All his, all his abilities and all his, all his things that he had going for him ne- never, never like played a factor in the storyline of him getting to King. I, I guess I just found it really unsatisfying. Wow. But but I I did see you, where you're so Mallory from. Mallory what? here's my question Mallory were you someone who watched did you watch the show all in one go or did you like start season one and take the breaks and have to take the breaks in between or did you just watch it right through No I watched like I think I started watching like like six seasons and then I had to take the breaks Okay I watched yeah like- I was the same way I I think I watched the first four or five and then I was caught up and had to had yeah. to start waiting so okay. I thought maybe that might. I thought maybe that would uh, factor into to how you to view the ending because I think I think waiting the eighteen months for that is kind of what got me. Like Adam oh, said, yeah, eighteen true. months for that. But but, but that's always, a, that's a good hot take. Yeah, I've always loved Brandon okay. Clark though, so I feel like that's like another reason why I really like the ending. So I don't know. Maybe that's why. I mean. Maybe I don't disagree with the him becoming king, but there were so many storylines that were just unsatisfying. Like Jamie Lannister uh, spends a good chunk of the last last you know part of the show courting uh, Brienne of Tarth, and then just was like, "No, see you, see you, see you later, buddy." Deuces. Uh, we're two years into trying to date, and he's like, "Yep, uh, changed my mind. Sorry." I guess it's just like things like that that just kind of rattle my cage a little bit, but. Uh, <laughs> Mallory, yeah. you picked a really uh, good one to get Adam going this morning. I this know, was I awesome. I'm so mad. You I'm put so a mad. you put not, a quarter in him this morning. This is perfect. You you put me like right back into a spiral of looking up like <laughs> Game of Thrones conspiracy theories and like yeah. So thank you. My productivity is down the drain. So uh, <laughs> sorry, 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 Josh. I guess. Uh, <laughs> uh, Tori, Tori, you're up next. What do you got for us? I'm so mad. God, I'm so mad. <laughs> My hot take is Chick Fil A is not good. The only thing good about Chick Fil A is their milkshakes. And everybody on our team loves Chick Fil A, so it's always asked to go there. And I think it is not good. It's overhyped. So it's just like the chicken's just not that good, or what? Yeah, like I love chicken nuggets, and I got them. And it was not good. They were not good. So is there an alternative you like? Or are, we, are you like, you know, you're a Popeye's person? Are you a, is there, is there another place that you would way rather go to along the same lines of a Chick-fil-A? Mm, I've never been to Popeye's, so I have no idea. But we have like okay. some pretty good like hometown places here that make good chicken nuggets, but they're not like chains. It's overhyped that you don't like it? Yeah, I think it's overhyped. Like it is like not as hyped up would you like think they were good so i've been maybe a few years behind but i watched uh, super size me 2 the other day and that was all about chicken the guy opened up his own chicken place holy chicken it's called and that's pretty interesting is it the same is it the same guy who did the first super size me correct so he obviously ate mcdonald's for a year whatever it was and then this time what he's done is he opened up his own uh, fast food chicken place and it's called holy chicken and uh, basically, um, he researched chicken uh, along, you know, every single place, every joint, and created his own fast food place. And basically, inside it are um, on the walls and everything is written the truth about chicken. So he's painted it green, so everybody thinks it's um, obviously super healthy. He's uh, wrapped his um, chicken burgers in paper, so everybody thinks it's healthy. Um, he has a, a station where he paints the grill marks onto the chicken so it looks like it's been grilled the the burn marks and it's pretty interesting so they talk about chick-fil-a as well um and it is the number one chicken place in america and they're saying you know why it's like that and it's a pretty interesting documentary to watch but i disagree with her yeah I, I never grew up with i never grew up with one in the area so i guess i don't have a ton of experience with it but I, hey i'm on board i think it's overrated too i, mean, I think i've ate there once but yeah i'll, I'll just i'll just pop on the bandwagon so tori have- tori tori have you ever had raisin canes chicken mm-hmm. no, no? Not. okay no. they're good raisin canes. B- big fans big fan of raisin canes 
I think we're we're kind of limited by our geography here. We've kind of got McDonald's, Burger yeah, King, and the kind of the big Chick Fil A. What was? It's in my home. What was that? Like every time I'm home, I never eat Chick Fil A, and it's like right down the street. That's the best thing about landing at Minneapolis Airport is Chick Fil A. Oh, that's my first time there. there. That is my first. I know. But I feel like. If there's one that's in your hometown and there's one that's not, I feel like the one that you're, you don't go to as often has a little bit of novelty and kind of becomes the favorite because like if you've got a Chick-fil-A in your hometown. Well, it's like, yeah, who cares? But if you don't have a Raising Cane's, then I think maybe that's a little bit, uh, maybe more exciting. I, I don't know. I'm convinced. I'm convinced the Chick-fil-A south of the Mason Dixon line are better than the ones north of the Mason Dixon line. And I have absolutely no basis for that statement, but, uh, I've always just said if I'm south of the Mason Dixon line, I'm gonna go through uh, go through Chick Fil A. That's that's kind of what really the hot take people. section is about because you know we we don't do research and I you know I don't put a lot of time thinking into my opinions, but I certainly do have strong opinions. So that yeah that that fits right into the theme of like what this whole thing is. Uh, at least uh, maybe you'll be last if Rich doesn't have one, but uh, we'll, we'll see. What do you got for us? Um, for, it's like kind of only if you've been in Aberdeen, but I don't think Aberdeen water is that bad. Like, I'll just drink it from the tap. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually, do you know what? Um, oh, man. Um, someone told me that. They thought that uh, the water is really, really good in Aberdeen as well. I just heard that. Uh, I live outside city limits, so we have well water, so it's kind of hard, but uh, someone told me the city water is really, really good. Yeah, I mean, I well, I guess I think if water is cold, it all tastes the same. No, I, I wonder water, if it's if a, having like room temperature water. Yeah, you can taste it, but if it's cold, like you can't taste it. I wonder that's, that's if the truth to that depends on where you live, because you know, I've run by the I've run by Moccasin Creek before. And when I drink tap water in my home, it's like instant flashbacks to like standing on the bridge. Like it is just like absolutely a one-to-one -one ratio of the smell and the taste that you kind of waft in when you're either driving or running by the, the creek. It, it, I just can't, I just can't handle it. <laughs> Have you never had tap water from anywhere else? Or like, how is this possible? How do you think this? Have you... Have you never had bottled water in your life? Like, what? what's going on here? No, I very, you know, from Southern California, very, like, eco-friendly. So, no, I don't really. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I have bottled water, but it's because I'm at a gas station and I'm, like, thirsty. I don't know. Yeah, it's I just like don't know how you, when you make the jump. That, like, as soon as you get to Aberdeen, I feel like people start, like, listing off the conditions of Aberdeen and the water is like top and I'm like you know it's honestly not that bad that's actually pretty maybe it true. is that a bandwagon mentality mm -hmm. it could just be why one of those things where so many people think it whether it's true or not you kind of just convince yourself that it's true if if that's what it takes to fit in with everyone else right. Austin Nickelback's not that bad I don't think so either. It's more oh, yeah. like that's a bandwagon. That's a bandwagon thing. One day, everyone just decided we're all going to hate Nickelback, and I think they got oh. the raw end of that deal. I love I Nickelback. Think Nickelback's pretty good. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't like listen to like one of their songs, like a whole album. But like, if it's on like yeah. my phone and it's on shuffle and it comes on, I don't skip it. I used exactly. to exactly exactly. Like sixth grade like i would jam out to nickelback i would have it on my little ipod shuffle and i would just be a little photograph yeah yeah, yeah pe people people forget people forget about ipods that's a question because I, <laughs> I had an ipod i had like the first ipod nano that ever came out <laughs> not humble brag i guess but <laughs> you know whatever right uh and it was it was absolutely electric i wish they still made them i think my dad still has his he has like just like all eighties, like strictly eighties, and he listens to it when he mows the lawn. I'm pretty sure. That's <laughs> I'll buy it from him. Tell him, tell him I'll buy it from him. <laughs> has like a original him. iPhone somewhere. You have to like plug them in and keep them plugged in in order for mm -hmm. it to work. It has like the rectangle, like <laughs> the original iPhone. Hey, what? Is it, wait now. This is the original. Save that. 
iPhone one. Is that the iPhone one? Yep. Oh <laughs> my use it as an MP3 player. It's tiny. That's electric. <laughs> I love you look like a giant on. <laughs> that is unreal. Like your watch, like your watch has more processing power than that. Hold, hold on to that. That's museum. That's museum type stuff, there, Rich. You gotta oh, yeah. keep that. Keep that bad boy. I keep everything. Um, <laughs> I do not. My my iPod Nano broke about fourteen years ago. Um, so, uh, I think I think we can all agree we're we're probably getting to the end of our our hot take section here. Uh, that was good though. Um, and the the next section here, I'm gonna give you a little rundown. It is a game, um, but we'll get guesses from each person. This one's called Scottish slang. Now, Rich put together a few different Scottish sayings that are common. Obviously, uh, newsflash, they're common in Scotland. And uh, he's gonna I'll, I'll read them off probably incorrectly he'll he'll correct me on the pronunciation and then we're gonna have you guys get guess what you think that they mean so are you guys ready no. yeah. rich should i try to do like a scottish accent i feel like it's gonna be really bad yeah you're fine i don't mind well, Absolutely. well here hey little fun fact rich from aberdeen scotland right correct yeah so I, I don't know if I, I think I feel like I told you this. I've been to your hometown. I've been to um, the university and, and around the town in Aberdeen. So, uh, you know, I know a little bit about Scotland, you know, uh, Robert Gordon University. Is that right? Yep, that's right. I went there as well. To your student yeah. there. I'm a, man, I'm a man of culture. What can I say? Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, the first one is fit like the day. Fit like the day. You can, you you say it, Rich, and then they'll we'll start with Mallory, Tori, and then we'll go to Elise. So the word the is becomes a. Eh. So it'd be fit like a day. Fit like a okay. day. Okay. Fit like a day. Fit like. Fit a like a day. Okay, I think it means good morning. Is okay. It, we'll see what. Mm, well. We'll do the we'll do the answer reveal after everyone's done guessing. Austin, I know the answers. I don't know if you've read the script, but feel free to get in on this. I also know the answer, so I'm not going to cheat. I'll just alternate okay. with you. Okay, Tori, you're up. I'm not even sure I heard the right words, but... It like a day. It like a day. A day. Have a good day. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to take it as like a day could be long so it, or short, I guess, not a perspective. So like it like what? fit well, felt well. Okay, Ma Mallory, Mallory and Tori like a good morning and that kind of thing. It's a little, it's pretty close. It's fit like a day is how are you? What? Uh, what? So close. I was pretty close. Uh, at least not even close. Sorry. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so hey, better, hey, better luck next time. Next. Rich, is this next? Is this next one odds and a Ken? I did a Ken. I did a Ken. Nice, did a Ken. nice. Well done. I did a Ken. I wish we had like um, closed captions. Ah, did a oh, yeah. Ken. Ah, did a Ken. <laughs> um, I'm gonna say like my name is blank. It's like the beginning of my name is. <laughs> That's my answer. Ah, there it is from Austin. I <laughs> think okay. Oh. Oh. I think it is something about dinner. Like, we're going to have something for dinner. I don't know. Um, <laughs> it sounds like something you would yell when you stub your toe. <laughs> you say what, something you would yell when you stub your toe? Yeah. I did not can. Awesome. Yeah, like could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Does Mallory right, guess? Austin. Final answer. It's, I don't. I don't know. Oh. But if you say "fit like today," and you could answer, I did not can. How are you today? I don't know. <laughs> I stick to guessing somewhere along that baseline because my guess was not even close. Yeah. Um. This is not a 
game. <laughs> well, hey, How about if any? They they only get harder, so buckle buckle in. Awesome. Right. How about I'm knackered? I'm knackered. I'm knackered. I'm tired. Yeah, that's I'm what I. Time I'm for a nap, something like that. Knackered. There knackered. we go. Knackered, right? Is that what when you said? I I'm tired. Very tired. When I yeah. when I saw this, when I thought you know kids show, I thought maybe it meant that you'd been like overserved or something like that. I thought maybe that's what you I know, thought. Hey, too. <laughs> hey, like hey, buddy, you're pretty knackered. It's time to go home. Um, <laughs> that's what which, I thought you know, too. <laughs> uh, would make sense if if you're tired, you should go home as well. Um, and 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 I, I'm up next here. Uh, that's minging. That's minging. That's minging. Uh, minging. Mi- minging. Minging. Dang it. That's minging. Minging. Um, I'm gonna have to go uh, around the lines of that's crazy or like that's out of this world or something. I don't know. Maybe. I guess we'll find out, Tori. Um, good job. I don't know. Good yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, okay. I'm like, that's wow. minging. Yeah, that's, like that's like that's what? Minging. <laughs> that's great. Um, well, so uh, you guys could not have been more wrong. Oh, um, <laughs> that <laughs> it's when I open my uh, son's diaper and I that's see what minging. I that's that means that's horrendous. That's disgusting. Uh, yeah. So, so there you go. Um, and I am so glad I don't have this next one because I have no idea how to say it. Austin, good luck, buddy. Hog your weast. Hog your weast. Hog your weast. Fire. Hog your weast. I'm Scottish. Hog right, your weast. Very good. Very good, Austin. Hog your weast. Have your weast. Hog your weast. Hog. Okay. Hog your weast. Um. Oh gosh. Oh, I know. I think it means hold your horses. It sounds like something. I like that. I yeah. like that guess. That's a lot. good answer. That's You're a not good right, but answer. it's really good. <laughs> that, I, I, it's, it's, it's on the right train of thought. I think to give a hint to the other two. Yeah. Um. Um, I mean, I'm going to go with what it sounds like, so it's like, have a good week. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> it sounds like hide, like hide, go hide somewhere, but I don't know. I'm going to have to go with Thorpe on this one. Hold your horses along that. I don't know. <laughs> Be quiet. So, Rich, is Rich, Rich, do you ever scream this? Uh, do you ever, no, do, do, do you ever have to... So I'd be in a conversation. I'd be hard your waist. <laughs> Me, Lord, I, don't know. So it's okay. I don't know what that means. You guys are gonna start hearing these in practice, maybe. <laughs> yeah, that's minging. That's minging. <laughs> that's that's minging. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, Adam. Should we do one more? <sighs> We'll do one, and then I want to try this one where Rich is going to teach us to speak Scottish. So I'll do this. I'll do this one here, and then we'll we'll try that one. Uh, is it guy or gee? Gee. Get. Gee. Gee. Get. Get loudy. Get loudy. Close. Get loudy. Get loud. Get loud. Good, good luck with. Good luck with this one. Is it just good luck? Is that why you said it? <laughs> that would be a little, a little guess. Not there. quite. Not quite. I mean, you're you're close. Close. That fin- final lead. guess, at least. I, yeah. Submit answer. <laughs> Submit answer. Oh, I. I oh. think maybe get rowdy. Ooh. I don't know. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I would. I don't know. Maybe like same thing as Thor, but like get crazy or something. I don't know. Like that. <laughs> I don't know. These are I, hard. So, so get loudy. It's do something with gusto or like 
give it all you've got. You guys, I, I would, if, if we were keeping track, uh, I would say I would count it. You know, get rowdy. That's that's close. Partial kind of credit. Give yep. it all day. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, like like just kind of, you know, send it, get after it. Yeah. So, Rich, do you, do you want to – do this this next part it says how anyone can speak scottish do you want to uh, want to run us through that one yeah so uh by seeing these two uh, words together i don't know tori elise and mallory might know about it so I, I tried to do it in pre-season if you put these two words together you sound like you're saying something more in a glaswegian accent which is in the south of scotland so the first word would be space as in the space above or whatever like a is. space shell you're out, space you're shell, out correct. In the atmosphere, yep. and the okay. uh, second word would be ghettos g-h-e-t-t-o-s so you put those two words together so you, space ghettos and then you say it you say it to yourself and you start saying it a little bit quicker uh you you'll hear something and you so you can go around so Maori, you can go first so i just keep saying it faster and faster well say it a few times and then we'll get um tori and elise to say it all right. Okay. So, space ghettos. Space okay. Ghettos. Okay. Well done, Elise. Space ghetto. Space ghetto. Space okay. ghetto. Thank you. I'm sorry, Thor. <laughs> space ghetto. Space ghetto. Skip. Space. What does it sound like? Spaghettios. I am ghetto. So space ghettos. Spaghetti. Space ghettos. Spaghettios. No. Oh. <laughs> I am so lost, you but I love it. Um, Rich, Rich, when you. It's a pop group. Rich, will you. It's a what? It's a, a girls' pop group. Oh. You say it Spice, oh, Girl. Spice Girls. Oh, Spice Girls. Oh. Dang. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. If you say it, it sounds like you're saying. <laughs> Spice Girls in a Scottish dialect, so Space oh. Ghettos. Oh, oh. <laughs> I like that. That's awesome. We should have known that. We did that one before. Yeah. God, yeah that's good. It, it sounds like you're Scottish. That's awesome. I'm gonna use that. Oh, that's. Uh, the next, I like the that next time one. I go to next time I go to Scotland, I'll I'll be able to talk about is Spice Girls, but that's okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, we'll 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 adapt. Um. Okay, uh, so so now we're gonna we're gonna go on to a, a few soccer questions, and we can kind of go around the horn here. But you know, a lot of you guys were here when um, you guys played at the old grass dirty field. Um, you know, what was the transition like from kind of you know? I don't want to I don't want to slander dirty field because it, it kind of was what it was. But uh, what was the transition like from a facility like that to something that's pro undoubtedly you know the best in the conference of the region? Uh, start with Mallory. Um, well, I thought it was like a hundred times like so like I'm not trying like I love dirty field, but it was just so much better like going onto that turf field like I played turf in high school and so I had been used to it kind of and so going um onto the turf field like it just it like made the game quicker, which makes it more fun to play and then um I also just the locker room every the conference room above it is just absolutely amazing. And so it, I didn't really have a problem because it was just so awesome. Like I love being there. So that was. Here's maybe a, a follow-up question for you. You know, is, you know, when you have to transition from grass to turf, is that kind of a hard transition? Do you kind of have, how long does it take to readjust? You know, you know, obviously your, your touches go farther on turf and things like that. Like how long does it take to kind of get back in the field for turf? Um, uh, I would say just, just like as many practices that you can get in, I think the faster the transition will be. And so it just kind of depends on how much time you spend on that field, I guess. And another thing about like, like, so I said, like the game is like, it picks up a lot. And so you need to be more fit so you can be able to bounce back from passing and then making the run and everything. And so I think that plays a factor into your transition as well. Okay. Uh, Tori, uh, any, any comments on, uh, you know, maybe switching from, uh, you know, dirty field to kind of the, the athletic and rec field that we've got now? 
Um, I think, well, everything Mal said and picking up the pace, like the speed, Jerdy's grass was always so long, like, and then going to turf, like, it was ridiculous, like the speed that it went. And then you didn't have to worry about like rain, mud puddles in your field, all of that kind of stuff. So it was so nice for like maintenance and stuff. But like having the turf field is like, it's just like such a confidence booster because like, when, you know, when people come to your field, they're like, wow, this is so nice. Rather than, I mean, you would just like hate to know what they thought when they came to Jerdy Field before because it was like just a thick grass field, you know? Um, and like, so yeah. having it and like having people come to your field, like maybe it's like an intimidating factor to them or something. Like you have that nice facility that you get to like practice on all year round. Yeah, I, I was just going to ask if there was a bit of an intimidation factor when teams come in. Do you, do you notice that they're kind of in, in awe or a little bit of shock when they when they show up to the facility? Uh, well, I don't usually see them when they show up to the facility, but I'd like to think that they, like, are kind of like, wow. Because, you know, when, that's the first thing you do when you get to a field is kind of check out their field, like, their facilities. So I'd like to think that they are, like, a little intimidated by it. Yeah, yeah, and that's kind of, you know, what you we see that at the Athletic and Rec fields, and we see that in, I guess, basketball a lot, too, and when we're setting up for games and stuff. You see teams walk in, and the first thing they do is their eyes go up, and they get wide, and they're, you know, so kind of have that in a, in a few different sports. Uh, Elise, any any comments on, you know, what, what was the transition like? You played, you know, games on Jury Field, and now uh, some on the Athletic and Rec field. What's that been like for you? Well, like, First, I think it was crazy how fast it actually happened because I think I found out about it in the spring and honestly I was like, oh yeah, okay, it's gonna happen, whatever. <laughs> and then it like popped up in the fall and I'm like, okay, it's kind of cool. But um, <laughs> no, I think like goes back to the fact that the Jerdy like facilities did a great job of like keeping it as grass field, but yeah, it was. I agree. Like, I agree with that. It was so thick though too, yeah, and like exactly. turf also makes it. I mean, it bounces weird, like with a high ball, whatever, but it's more predictable. Like, as I said, like the snow and rain and stuff, like, you know, really, like if you kick a ball, there's no hole that it might go into or a bump it might bounce into. But um, yeah, and then like going back to the game is faster. I also think I ran many um, fitness tests on Dirty Field. And they were so much more difficult because my feet would get like stuck in the ground and it's just really nice to be able to like just run on the turf. But Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it can, it can rain and then, you know, 20 minutes, half hour later, the field's dry and you guys are practicing business as usual. My favorite part about dirty field was that the fence was like, like literally touching the back of the goal. So if like, you know, you're running in for, I, I'm not too hip on the lingo, but like you're going for a try and then you just like you got to almost got to wear a helmet because you might that chain link coming for ven vengeance so you got you know head on a swivel uh i guess but yeah yeah no that that's a great that's great input there i appreciate I think that the funniest part about the old field was the trees so they would i don't know what kind they're called but the little like leaf it's not a leaf it's like looks like a banana oh you know, you know, Above the goal, fall everywhere, and yeah, some they would fall everywhere. Up, we would have to like clear the field of them as a warm up. We have to go out and pick up all the leaves before we could do any corner kicks. Everybody had to go get handfuls and push up to the side. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. I did not. Well, you don't have that problem anymore. Well, I was going to ask each of you guys what your favorite part of the field, the new the new uh, setup was, but it sounds like it's kind of a unanimous. The playing surface is kind of the. Uh, the best part of the, which is good. I mean, I'm, being a part of the athletic department, I think we're we're all happy. That's the part that you're most excited about, the actual playing part. So uh, that's uh, that's awesome. Glad you guys like the surface. Maybe, maybe this is a good question for Rich too. Um, you know, you kind of came in. I, Rich, I don't I don't think that you ever saw old Jersey Field. You've maybe seen pictures, but how does how does Northern's you know collegiate soccer facility compare to others that you've seen uh, during your coaching career? I mean, well, I was lucky enough to see it in its old state. So I came up here with a rival school uh, three years ago, and and you know, oh yeah, yeah. Preparing for that game was it was going to be a nightmare, you know, because it brings I don't know the best of teams probably down to the same level as you're as you're playing against. So it was a, sort of a mud fest in that sense that it was a very very difficult game, and 
uh, eventually we prevailed in the last few minutes of the game. And then the following year, we came back, the new stadium is up, uh, which was great to see as well. But, I mean, in the overall uh, landscape of the picture, I mean, it's a massive recruiting tool for us. Uh, but the biggest thing is always to bring in recruits to Aberdeen. You know, you can talk about the field. You can tell them, oh, we've got a brand new field, great locker room, and uh, whatever it is. But until you actually show them it's in person, um, it's, it's, it's like a wow factor. And, you know, even right now, um, we can't bring recruits on campus, but I'm doing Zoom calls and turning my, you know, my, turning my computer uh, when I'm sitting in my office and saying, well, this is the view I have for my office, you know. Uh, and, you know, you can go around even in the States and uh, other states and, you know, we're by far the best facility, soccer-specific facility over D1 schools um, you know, there's a lot of schools that will share the facility. They'll have football lines. They'll have lacrosse lines on the field. We're soccer specific, and that's a massive selling point. Plus, we don't have men's soccer. So when I say to recruits, this is all ours. This is just women's soccer that are able to use on game day, uh, that can practice of it. Obviously, other, uh, you know, Northern State students can use it in the evenings for intramurals and things like that. But uh, it's just an unbelievable facility to have. Uh, especially when those lights go on in the evening, uh, you can put the sound system on. Um, we've got videoing capabilities. We can host people upstairs in that pavilion room. Uh, we've got a high training room there. Uh, nothing beats it. And, you know, I think it's one of the best in the country, definitely for Division Two. Like it's, you know, it's be hard pressed to say who has a better facility in Division Two around the country. And, you know, we'd be up there in D1 as well. I think you push a lot of programs to, to shame sort of for the facility that we have. So, um, you know, that's why I'm so excited to be here and, uh, you know, use that facility as a recruiting tool. Yeah, that's awesome. We're, we're kind of, you know, there aren't too many players left around who actually played on Dirty Field. So it's kind of fun to hear the, the perspective of people who've played on both because there are, you know, not, not too many of them left here, I suppose. but. Um, so uh, w with that, that kind of kind of takes us into our, our last question to end on a little bit of a fun note here. And, and Rich, you can chime in on this too. But uh, it, if you weren't to play college soccer, was there another sport that you were good at or was there another sport that you may not wish you would have played but you think you could have done or thought would be fun? Uh, anything along those lines? Mal Mallory, you're up. Um, well, I ran track when – all throughout my years of high school and so um and then I actually so as a freshman I placed as a long jumper and then I made it to state my um senior year and but I scratched on all three of my jumps so I feel like <laughs> if I were to if I were to have um if I were to have um done any other sport I feel like I would have tried long jumping as a collegiate sport I guess that would probably be my okay. Yeah. Both Adam's heart. <laughs> yep, yep. I was gonna say I feel like those those probably kind of go hand in hand. You know, the athleticism it takes to be a jumper um, probably lends itself to uh, soccer pretty well. So that that's awesome to hear. Uh, Tori, uh, <laughs> what sport would you have played had soccer not been your path? Um. Well, before actually before I decided that I was going to play soccer, I was thinking about playing basketball like college. So I was a big basketball player. Oh, nice. Okay. You played all throughout high school? Yep. That's awesome. My Me, dad started a traveling team in third grade, and then I guess I kept playing it. <laughs> Thorpe and I used That's to play awesome. in middle school. Those traveling oh, really? teams are no joke, though. <laughs> no. Those 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 basketball dads and moms are all business. Like they're traveling, they're staying in hotels every weekend. It's it's wild. It's wild. Uh, I I was on one of those, but I was on the a bench most of the time. So my parents probably spent a couple grand on hotels to just watch me, like mm -hmm. basically sit on the couch as if I were at home. So uh, you got you a know. uniform though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, thanks, mom and dad, for supporting my mediocre basketball career. Uh, Elise, Elise, what do you got for us? So in high school, I also ran cross country and track because back home, soccer is a um, a fall sport. No, excuse me, a winter sport. So then cross country was the fall sport. Um, 
And then I actually ran track at Northern for a um, season, last season. So, yeah, I would have probably pursued track. Um, yeah. I what, was, what event do you think you would have done distance running? Yeah. Well, not – oh, my goodness. I can't do, like – we have to do the mile and a half on the track and I go crazy. I just like go crazy, you know? So I will at most run the 1500. And okay. That's only like not even. That was, that was kind of my, that was the 15 was my forte. And that thing is, that thing is no joke. Uh, yeah. And it's the hardest event in track and field. And anyone who disagrees with me, uh, I'll give you my address. Cause I'm, throwing hands on site with anyone that disagrees with that but uh so, so that's my thoughts on the 15 great choice uh on an so, event. yeah i college wise and granted i only did it for a season but um i like the 15 but then high school i was really into the 800 i feel like you would be a good 800 runner <laughs> yeah i feel like that too <laughs> also brutal also brutal yeah, I like um thinking about it but the 800 is essentially you know a four the 400 is already a disgusting race oh my and an 800 God. is an 800 is an all-out four with basically an all-out four before it to tire you out so um i guess again if you think the 400 is harder than the eight uh just give me a call and i'll set you straight um my favorite thing though about track was when if you did the 400 you thought you were going so fast that last hundred meters, and if you watch like film on it, you're like just no. It's like <laughs> barely moving. For, like, barely moving. Looking for air where you can find it, and you're like really pumping. And, no, you're not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At the end of a track race, when you're in it, it feels like whoever's going the fastest, but it's really whoever's slowing down the least. Uh, is who's going to win. So I think that's the best way that you could probably put it because everyone's hurting at that point. Rich, I know you, you played a little bit of professional soccer, right? Yeah, a little bit, yeah. So, uh, my other, so, my, no. Yeah, sorry, I was going to say my oh. other big sport, sorry, my other big sport, and it was, I had to make a decision when I was like 16 or 17, was actually field hockey. Uh, so field hockey is a big sport in Europe for both male and female. I know in this country it's female only. Uh, but, yeah, I was a big time in uh, – I loved playing field hockey. I was a forward in field hockey. I played it all through high school and a club level as well. Uh, and I love field hockey. So that was the other sport um, that I could have gone. Obviously not to this country. But, um, yeah, if, if it was in this country, uh, 100%. And Austin would do it as well. Golf. Well, Austin was a golfer. So I'd be golfer these days uh, if I could. So, Abby choice. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I think yeah, that's, that's close to Austin's heart there. So great, um, yeah, great, great answer, great answer. It's a uh, it's a lifelong sport. You can't run the eight hundred in your in your forties. Well, I I suppose you can, but or fifties or sixties, but you can play golf that long. So maybe a a good choice. Um, but I guess so with, with this that. One Right. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Nope, you're, you're good. Thing, you can play golf as well. What was that? You can get good at golf at the, during this time because it's technically like six feet apart, right? right? Yep. Yeah. Golf yeah. Courses, courses, are courses are courses are open. I broke out my golf skills with my dad last Friday. Let's just say y'all don't want to challenge me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Hills, Hills, Hills View. No, we went to Dunes and Fort Pier. Okay. The least we have to go to the least professional course in town because we're not very professional. <laughs> Fair enough. No one is. Um, well, with that, that kind of brings us uh, to, to the end here. It's almost perfect timing hour on the nose. Um, be before we say goodbye, any any parting words of wisdom from Coach Rich or any of the, the players here on, you know, what are you guys going to be doing for the next couple of weeks or, or, you know, any, any, any life advice, any words of wisdom, Rich? Um, and anything you do, get it loudly. <laughs> get it loudly. <laughs> yes. Yes. I like that. I'm going to, I'm going to use that one. And for those get of you who don't remember that, every, give it everything you've got. Just don't. Give yeah. it everything you've got. 
Uh, Mallory, Tori, Elise, any any parting words here? Stay safe and healthy. Uh, no, <laughs> enjoy the sunshine. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wash your hands. Well, uh, <laughs> yes. All all good things. Uh, well, thank you guys for being on the show today. Uh, thanks, Coach Rich, for joining us. Um, stay tuned to the NSU Athletics Facebook and Twitter for when our next episode is going to be. We'll put that information out uh, shortly as soon as we get it scheduled. And, uh, yeah, in, until next time, thanks for tuning in, and go Wolves. Go Wolves. Go Wolves. Go Wolves.